MPD. Here in Dumaguete City, the city of gentle people, except when they're driving. Today is, I actually had to check, October 12th, 2020, the first day of the rest of our lives. So let's try to make the most of it. I trust everything is well with everybody out there. I just want to give a quick update. Everything is okay here. Um, I am in here doing a live stream right now because I haven't done anything for a while on this. And I also, I also have to talk and share my latest failing. Um, and meanwhile, Chichai and Janice are changing the sheets because this morning we had a bit of a diaper explosion on the bed. So that necessitated me going out and washing the sheet, drying it, and they are now replacing it because that's what I do now. Chichai is taking care of baby. I am taking care of everything else. I am basically the helper. I am the assistant, the helper. All right, I'm going to try to keep this live stream short because I know people are busy and they have better things to do with their valuable time. Um, I've talked about this before, and it's actually in my book, uh, Chasing Your Philippine Dream, An Expat's Guide to the Philippines, which you can actually get in the uh, link down in the video description box. That's a cheap plug right there. And I talk about this concept called Pakikisama. There are certain foundations of Filipino culture. Uh, there is Utang na Loob. There is also Pakikisama, which I'm going to talk about. There's Hiya, that feeling of shame. There's the more propio. There's all these certain things that come together to create the stew that is Filipino culture. And basically, as far as I can tell, after seven years here, Pakikisama simply has to do with smooth interpersonal relations, S-I-R, smooth interpersonal relations. That's actually how it's called sometimes, which means sir, which is appropriate. And it's basically how you relate to people around you, whether they be casual acquaintances, friends, family, complete strangers. It's basically being nice, being decent, being helpful not being a dick. And this is where, once again, my personal failure in you know, maintaining Pakikisama occurred. Um, Pakikisama, there are ex certain examples of it. If you belong to any Tagalog, Filipino forums and stuff, you'll, be, you'll see people using sir a lot when they start or they're responding to forum threads. You'll also see people using PO a lot. They'll put PO at the end of their sentences, which is basically just a term of respect. Um, you also see Pakikisama, like when I broke down, down in East, uh, I think it was Bakong. My truck broke down, my Pajero, and I had a flat tire. And I'm sitting there, I don't know what to do, and this guy comes out, he's an old guy, he's late 70s, he comes out and he's got a glass of water for me. He doesn't know me from anybody. But that's Pakikisama. Pakikisama is when, uh, since we're talking about cars, somebody car, somebody's car breaks down in the middle of the street and other people all come over to help push it off to the side. Pakikisama is when, you know, somebody has to move their native house and 50 neighbors get together with these really long poles, literally lift the house up and carry it down the road to wherever it's going. That's Pakikisama. I was talking to Chichai the other day. Let me make sure this is actually working real quick. Uh, okay. Hi, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Um, yes, this is unannounced. Uh, I was actually talking to Chichai the other day about why I think Pakikisama is so important in the Philippines and why it's a part of the culture here. Actually, it's part of like middle-aged and older Filipinos. You'll, you'll see them adhering to it, but younger Filipinos, the dyes and the dogs nowadays, they're getting a little more self-centered, they're getting a little more egocentric, so they're working their way away from Pakikisama. The reason, the theory, um, this is a hypothesis, and a hypothesis is an educated guess, and I don't know how educated I am to this, but I think one of the reasons that Pakikisama is so important is because of the daily grind sometimes in living in the Philippines. I mean, they experienced four, you know, basically 500 years of colonialism, so they're trying to deal with that. They have natural disasters. They got volcanoes. They got typhoons. They got super typhoons. They got earthquakes. They got all these things happening. Um, it's a developing nation, so not everybody's super wealthy. You know, they're not trying to keep up with the Jones and get the latest Tesla, you know, so there's struggles there. 
Um, and it can be difficult, the heat, the congestion, the humidity, the chaos. So I think people just go out of their way to try to be nice, to try to compensate for the difficulty sometimes that is life here. Um, and it is actually, it, and again, when I first came to the Philippines and I had strangers, you know, just randomly talking to me saying, hi, sir, where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. How's your family? You know, all this stuff. I didn't realize where that was coming from. Um, and being from Boston, I was, you know, I was very defensive. People were looking at me. People were smiling, all this smiling stuff. I don't know what that was all about. But Pikiki-sama is very important, and it is a part of the foundation of the Philippines. And that's why when us foreigners, you know, when we, you know, lose, the, lose, lose our path and we start, you know, responding negatively to certain situations and we start to get frustrated and we begin to express that frustration with our words and our posture and all that stuff, why it kind of blows Filipino minds and why it kind of makes them really uncomfortable. Because you're not supposed to be doing that. You're supposed to maintain decorum. Um, Pakikisama, there are some problems with it because when there is a problem with somebody, people tend to worm their way around it. They won't, direct, they won't confront it directly. So that can cause problems. And you'll see that a lot here, you know, in the day to day. Um, but I think it is a wonderful thing. And again, when people are always commenting on how friendly Filipinos are and, and all that stuff, a lot of that comes from Pakikisama. And again, that's from their parents raising them. That was instilled. Those values were instilled to them by their family. Because again, and it's another theory of mine, I think family is number one in the Philippines. I don't think there is any other consideration higher than that or loyalty higher than that, including government, God, all that other stuff. The, the family ties here are very intense. All right, so let's get to the matter at hand. How did I fail to maintain my Pakiki Sama? This actually happened last week. Um, I think it was afternoon. It was around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, maybe 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Not sure. I do know that the mosquitoes were out. And there was... Chicha again was taking care of Zoe. Janice was here, I believe. And there was a commotion by the gate. And we live in a cul-de-sac, so when my dogs are barking in the yard, that means there are strangers at the gate. Either that or there's a really good-looking male dog and Angel's just losing her mind over him. So I wander out there. I don't know what I was doing. I think I was trying to do some work or something. So I go out, and there's two kids. And when I say kids, I don't know, early 20s. I'm 53. That's kids to me. There's two kids out there in uniforms. They got a blue-white uniform. They're standing out there. They got name tags, and they got clipboards and stuff. And I hear Chichai yell out something like, census. And I'm like, oh, it's the senseless. So I go over there, and I'm like, hey, how you doing? And they were very polite, of course. They, they, and again, Pakiki-sama is like when you get a text from somebody, they'll always say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, sir. You know, it's, it's always polite. So there's, they're like, good afternoon. You always say good afternoon. Sometimes with my Filipino neighbor, I'll forget to say good morning to them when I greet them first thing in the morning, and they'll remind me. They'll be like, oh, good morning. And I'll be like, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry, good morning. Anyways, had a lot of coffee today. So they say good, good afternoon, I say good afternoon, and then they start saying, we're the census, and we just want to ask you a bunch of questions. And I'm like, sure. And then they launch into the questions. And the questions, and I've never taken a census in the United States, so I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I was going at this from a very ignorant, self-centered, and my usual overbearing attitude. So they want to know things like your full name, first, middle, family name, which in the United States is last name. They want to know things like your date of birth. They also want to know your place of birth. And I'm not just saying the country that you were born in, but specifically where were you, you were born in the United States. And they started asking a bunch of other questions. And I was like, I didn't know how to respond to this because, and again, in my book, you'll note that there is a chapter when it comes to scams and stuff is anybody can get uniforms, anybody can make up t-shirts, anybody can make, make up name tags, there's places you can't, you know, you can walk out to downtown Dumaguete, throw a rock and you'll hit five or six of these places that built, that make these name tags and all this. And like anywhere else in the world, there was a problem with people collecting personal information on people. So I was a little, you know, put off about that. 
But I was also in a place where, you know, this is the government and this is the census people. And I don't want to be lying to them because I don't want to get, you know, in trouble for that, get blacklisted or something along those lines. So I was kind of torn. And of course, of course, of course, I gave them all the factual information that I could. I dug deep. Um, I faced all my demons. And I did that. And at some point, Chi Chai had come out. Um, and she saw how f frustrated and how reluctant I was to give certain information. She also saw me saying things like, I really don't want to tell you that because that's personal information. That's banking verification information you know, that banks use in, you know, for financial purposes and stuff. And I really don't want to be giving you all the specific information. And Chicha is like, it's okay, it's the government, it's the government. And I could tell that she was embarrassed. And this is, this is where, I mean, when I'm just embarrassing myself, that's one thing. I got no problem with that. And if you, you know, if you are unfortunate enough to know me personally, you'll know that I have no problem embarrassing myself. I do it all the time. I speak my mind. I'm not a shrinking violet. Uh, but to embarrass her, that's where it really starts to stuck in. And then she basically took over some of the conversation and, you know, she helped complete the census information. And like the United States, I'm sure the census is important because, you know, when that, that's the information that the government uses to allocate resources, financial assistance, congressional districting. I don't know the extent that it goes to, but it's important that it gets done. And if I could turn back time, if I could turn back time, if I could turn back time and have those two young people in front of me, I would just really like to apologize because I was not at my best and it was difficult for them. Now, on the other hand, with me melting down and me losing my mind, basically, and me being super defensive and not wanting to give them this information, they continued to be very polite. But you could see it in the woman's, the woman's expression. She was like getting starting to get a little frustrated with me, but she didn't say anything. She was all kept kept being very polite. Um, and again, I embarrassed myself. I embarrassed Chi Chai, and I wish I could apologize to those census takers. Um, there was some other considerations. Again, there was something else going on. We have, we have a baby, so there's always things that I have to do. I have to keep, you know, just running around, putting out fires, taking care of things. And also, the mosquitoes were out. So it was probably after 3.30 that the sensors showed up. Because as I, was, as I started to talk to them, the mosquitoes were hitting my legs. And the ones that hit your legs are those little Egypt a-E-G-Y-P-T, those little Egypt mosquitoes, those are the ones that give you dengue. The dengue virus, or as I like to say, the Egyptian virus, those are the bad ones. So these things are hitting me. They're asking me all these really personal questions. And again, I think what I'm doing right now is actually making excuses for my behavior, and I probably shouldn't be doing that. I should probably be owning it, being responsible, and... I guess I can't be made accountable at this point unless they see this video and say, yeah, that's him. That's the jerk. So anyways, that's Bakiki Sama. Um, I was actually thinking about Bud Brown right after that because I saw a video that he had done, how the, Philippine has, how the Philippines has changed him, how living in the Philippines has changed him. If you don't know Bud Brown, he's another vlogger. He lives here in Dumaguete. Great guy. And... As I, some, as I watched his video, I was like, man, I wish those same changes had occurred to me because I still have a hard time dealing with the frustration sometimes, dealing with certain things here, like dengue mosquitoes. Um, so, yeah, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Pakiki Sama is a wonderful thing. Um, and, again, when people first come here and they always mention how friendly – and cordial and inviting like when they have fiestas you go to a fiesta and this is why everybody and their brother if like a bakong's having a fiesta everybody will go to bakong because a lot of people down on bakong will set up these giant feasts and people will be walking by and they'll say hey come on in um you want some food you know they'll invite you into their home or they'll usually have tables set up outside and all that stuff and you just partake of it because that's just the way it is here um so that is pakiki sama and once again, I failed to live up to the expectations that are ascribed through that 
Filipino foundational stone. So I apologize to anybody who was affected. All right, let's go to the comments, if there are comments. Oh, I think I just lost my page. Travel and Learn asks, do you have air conditioner? So that's the end of this video. I'm just going to be responding to questions um, for a little while. Let's see. Travel and Learn says, do you have an air conditioner there? Yes, I have a Medea 0.5 horsepower DC inverter running right now, which only runs, it only uses about 250 watts per hour. I love it. It's, I should have bought this years ago. So to, to answer your question, yes. And baby Zoe, our daughter, our one month old daughter, she is half Kano and I have a lot of Neanderthal DNA. So she also needs air con. So at night we're in the bedroom and we're running the carrier. It's not an inverter. It's just a regular window unit and it sucks up a lot of electricity. But nothing's too good for my baby. Left, uh, left to y'all around, you need to sing more and get those guitars out. I don't know, man. There's been a lot of music in the house lately. It's a lot of Coco Melon. It's a lot of, you know, these little nursery rhyme songs. And they've been playing them over and over and over and over and over and over and over. But Zoe loves it and it lulls her to sleep. It puts her to sleep. Makes me crazy, but that's okay. Yeah, Janny2020 says, Jamaica is similar. I think it's because people live in close proximity to each other without a lot of resources. So they have to get along. That's absolutely part of it. Absolutely. Because, again, when you have family, close friends, or even casual friends, they'll all try to help out each, help each other out. If somebody needs something, they'll try. They'll go out of their way to help them out. Again, that guy who came out, that, that old gentleman who I didn't know, it was in the middle of the afternoon. It was like 2, 2 p.m. The sun was beating down. It was hot as hell. And he came out, and he didn't speak English, and I didn't speak any Bisaya then. He just gave me the water. I was just like, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And he just wandered back into his house and I actually had to return the glass to his house. Jenny 2020 says, I've been dodging census. Uh, let's see. Shane Porter says, the Philippines sounds a lot like the South in America. Hot, humid, and people being nice, just like home. Yeah, I spent three years in the South. Loved it. Love the South. Love those red states. Um, and I told this story, and I'll tell it again. I had a 1974 Grand Torino. That was my first car. I was stationed at Fort Bragg. I needed an alternator, so I went to a parts yard somewhere in North Carolina. I don't know where. The next thing I know, I get invited to the owner of the parts yard, invites me to his family pork pig roast or something. And I'm just sitting there having a great time meeting all these people. Yeah. Da, da, da. Yeah, so back to Lefty All Around. We need to sing more and get those guitars out. Yeah, Chichai hasn't played guitar or sang for a while. Probably because she's got Zoe get her hands 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Randall Frank says, does Valencia have dengue mosquitoes? Yes. Yes. Negros, over the past like two or three years, has had, had problems with dengue. Um... And it's not just, you know, just not here. It's all over the Philippines, but there are certain areas. And, and again, it's those little it's those little monsters, the little e Egypt mosquitoes, the Egyptian virus. Uh, so I always recommend people to make sure you have your off. They sell it here in Robinson's. They sell it all over the place. It's just a tropical cream and you put it on your legs. And that's basically the only place that you have to really worry about. So you just slather it on your legs in the morning. You know, at, at dawn, because that's when they're up, and in the evening. Roger Gordon says, I did some long-haul trucking when I was in the South. I found people very standoffish. Hmm. I felt more a foreigner in the South than I do when I'm in the Philippines. E I don't know. Okay, that's your experience. That's your experience. Um... White Angui says, the less people have, the kinder they are. Since being here, I have learned to be calm, and the blood pressure tablets are gone. Great vlog. Yeah, that's something I, I'm, ha I'm still having difficulty with. I still, 
have difficulty when I'm going out trying to get something accomplished. I'm on a mission and I have alternate missions just in case the primary mission I can't do, which often happens. But it just it's it's hard. It's hard for me. You know, maybe for other people it's easier. Um, but there are some other stressful things going on, you know, with the baby and everything. That's just, you know, and we had some problems with our marriage visa and we're getting there, though. Travel and Learn says, how long is the visa there in the Philippines? I just renewed for six months because it's, I'm pretty sure that's going to be as long as it's going to take to get my 13A marriage visa at this point. Living Asia, being a Christian country, do you think the people are more truthful than other Southeast Asian countries? I've lived in Thailand and Cambodia, and I find that many are automatic liars built into the DNA. You know what? I'm not going to answer that one. Maybe somebody else can in the comment section. I'll leave that for another day. I will leave that for another day. Um, yeah. Uh, Gentleman Cortez says, Hi, Ned. My husband saw you at the gym last week. Well, he should have said hi. Maybe he did, and I just forgot. I forget people all the time. Uh, no, no, no. So as, as far as the visa in the Philippines, if, if you have, if you can get here, eventually they're going to open the country up, maybe middle of next year, and you can get tourist visas here. And you usually your first month is 30 days, and you can renew for 60 days after that, or another 30 days, it depends. Or you can get a six month. There's all kinds of different things you can do. But it's just getting here. If you're not married to a Filipino or a Filipina, you're going to have a ver very difficult time getting in. Roger Gordon says, I'll never return to the South. In fact, I haven't been east of the Rockies since 1990. California and the PI are the only places I'm interested in. I got to see the Rocky Mountains sometime, man. All right, so that's basically it. John C. says, hi, I have been watching your YouTube for a while now. I felt like you are very happy there. Not perfect, but happy with your life and looks like you're fulfilled. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. When I, you know, when I start seeing the forest for the trees and everything, everything is good. I've, I've met a wonderful person. I have a, we have a wonderful child. Her family is excellent. I'm in a good place. Um, and it's not just the people, you know, it's, it's where I'm at also. I just, and again, I don't want to make it seem like I'm losing my mind here or anything. I can usually deal with things fairly well. But it's only when it starts to build up during the day that I have problems. And again, um, the majority of the problems that I think foreigners experience is just like the ones I'm having. Just not being able to respond to certain situations with decorum, with gravitas, with, you know, just slowing yourself down, breathing, accepting this Bahala Na, this concept of Bahala Na. Um, which basically it's kind of like, it is what it is. And so we create a lot of our own problems. And I mean, as, and as far can people ask me all the, all the time, you know, do you have problems with other Filipinos? No, the only f problems I have come from other foreigners because it's a special select crew that ends up washed upon foreign shores and living there long term. And they're kind of like pirates. It's like a community of pirates. And I'm not putting myself above them because I'm right in there as well. I'm a pirate. Otherwise, I wouldn't have lived in a you know, developing nation for the past three years. Uh, Gentleman Cortez says, Ned, do you know if it's allowed to go to Cebu now for US Embassy? All I hear is about travels for LSI budget when you need to get some paperwork from Cebu. I'm not sure. You're going to have to go and they're up they keep that they keep the Manila embassy updated and they keep the consulate website for Cebu updated very well. I think they're doing emergency um passports. I think they're doing that. I don't think they're doing, you know, the paperwork you need to get married in the Philippines right now. Uh So you just have to check in contact and also the consulate in Cebu and the embassy in Manila are very good about 
responding to emails. So that's probably the best way to contact them. Matter of fact, I just went through that this week with the embassy up in Manila because I was asking them about what's the process for getting the um, consulate notice of citizen born abroad, which doesn't look like that's going to happen for a long time. Hey, Ned, have you been able to find low-dose 82-milligram aspirin? Yes, weird question, but... Yes. Yeah, you can get them here, no problem. And yes, I'm in my boxers, so if I just... Everybody saw me in my boxers, I apologize. Travel Nurse says, do you need a special license there for a CPAP machine? I have no idea. Mark Higgins says... You're having to whine once in a while. A friend of mine always told me, remember where you are. Yeah. Good. You weren't able to see my underwear. I just saw it because there's a delay in the video. Uh, Roger Gordon says, share it. And it's very, very hard to climb the class ladder in the Philippines. I would agree with that. Dwayne Molenek says, yes, the embassy in Cebu is open now. Martin Ag Agnew. I don't know who this guy is. I think he's Australian. <laughs> Martin says, when you need something done at home, when I was in the Darwin NT, just invite your mates around for a barbecue and beer and they'll help you. Just don't put the beer on until the job is done. Good advice. Good advice. Travel and Learn says, I am a veteran. Is there a visa for us? Some kind of program? Yes. Yes, there is. Actually, the best deal you can get right now is these things called SRRVs. These are special retirement visas. And the best one, the lowest cost, is the U.S. military courtesy visa. The military courtesy visa, I should say. And I think it's like 1500 you have to deposit in a bank as a, you know, that they hold on to, which isn't a whole lot of money. And I think it's like another $1,000. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. You have to be 50 years of age. You got to have your DD-214, proof of all that. It's a process you have to go through. There's somebody they actually assign to you to assist you in the process. Now, the only problem is all the, and you're, and you're considered a permanent resident. You're considered a permanent resident of the Philippines. The only problem right now, and a lot of guys that have these SRRVs, they're not letting them come back to the Philippines. Even though they are considered permanent residents, they're not allowing people with SRRVs to come back into the Philippines. So yes, the best visa, the best long-term visa right now, if you're not married, is definitely the military courtesy visa. Jenny 2020 says, how is the house hunting going? <sighs> hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Roger Gordon says, travel. I took my CPAP machine with me last year. I didn't need any special paperwork. It even worked in the Philippines 220 volt electrical system. Mark Higgins says, by the way, really enjoyed the Dowin videos the other day. Yeah, that was nice. We went down to Mike's. We had an all day brownout from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So we went down to Tambobo Bay. Uh, that was actually Zoe's first big extended road trip. She did very well. She breastfed and slept the whole time, basically, which is pretty much all she does. Also, and this has nothing to do with anything. Chichai noticed this today. Her eyes are getting lighter. So she's already had got like slate blue eyes and they're actually starting to get like turquoise colored. It's weird. <coughs> COVID. Uh, la, 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 la. Tom Sorrell says, shaving. Can I buy uh, those much pricey Schick and Gillette five blade razors? Yeah, you can buy them here if you want. I still have my... Really old Noreco, Norelco, I said Noreco, Negros Oriental Electric Corporation. This is my Noreco. It's like an XL7150 or something. It's, it's like 15 years old. Every year I just replace the heads. So just get that. Sure, man. No problem. Travel and learn. Travel and Learn asks, do they have any VA hospitals there? They have a VA clinic at the U.S. Embassy up in Manila, but that is only for service-related disabilities and ailments, as far as I know. So it's not like a veteran's hospital. So there's that. Also, 
if you're military and you have TRICARE, you can use TRICARE. There are TRICARE uh, certified doctors here in the Philippines. There's actually some in Dumaguete. So if you have TRICARE, you can go to the doctor. He can bill you up the ass, and the, the U.S. military, the government, pays you back. Aruba Haha says, holy shit, you still have those. You must have been la laughing at my... Uh, my old razor. It works great, man. Norelco. These things... The, I don't know what kind of lithium-ion battery. This thing is literally about 12 years old. Yeah. Never stops. Uh, okay. So anyways, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, and again, I don't want to give the impression that the Philippines is not a wonderful place to live, uh, to visit, to, to travel. And again, it's not the things around me. It's me responding to those situations. So the problem, the onus of responsibility, the only one I can blame at the end of the day, which doesn't make it any easier, is myself. So don't get the impression that things are bad. I just thought I'd share this story um, I also like talking about my, my personal feelings because I don't like, I don't want to be one of those channels and I've never wanted to be one of those channels that just paints the Philippines as this perfect paradise with no problems whatsoever. Um, it does have problems like anywhere else in the world. But for me, most of the real problems have come through my own Ill inability to deal with certain situations in certain ways. And... Again, this, I, this concept of Pakikisam, the smooth interpersonal relation. Boston, Massachusetts. Somebody needs to introduce Boston, Massachusetts, Dorchester, Mattapan, Roxbury, JP, stab and kill uh, to this concept of Pakikisama, because I think we make life in Boston a lot easier for everybody. All right, that's enough for today, everybody. Please take care. Uh, and I also want to say one last thing. A lot of people, when I'm, we were putting up the videos, you know, of, of Zoe and everything, a lot of people were leaving comments. Very, we got a, so many comments. And things are busy here, and I'm not able to respond to all the comments. But I just wanted to thank everybody who left positive comments and congratulated us and wished us well. Again, Pakiki-sama. Even though we're not in the same room, even though for many of us we're not on the same country or continent, that is still Pakiki-sama. That is still that smooth interpersonal relations. And it doesn't cost you anything to, you know, say something positive and say something nice. So I want to thank everybody, and we want to thank everybody for, for doing that. Hold on. Honey, are you appropriate? Um, you need to leave. Oh, okay. And Chi-Chai echoes. She would... She would come in with Zoe, but she's feeding. Shocking. She's feeding Zoe right now. And my God, Zoe's gotten so fat. Oh, my God. She's so chubby. She doesn't have a neck anymore, and her head is perfectly round like Charlie Brown. She had chicken legs. She doesn't have chicken legs anymore. She's got elephant legs. Okay. Anyways, thanks again for tuning in. Thanks for all your positive comments. Be well, everybody. Be safe, and I will see you next time on my Philippine dreams.